in the coming weeks, I hope to create at least one video each week, uh, hopefully more, and hopefully I'll get a lot better at this. This week though, I thought I'd start off with showing and sharing something that is hopefully useful to you guys when it comes to color grading and shot matching. Matching color between plates can be tough, especially when, when you're just starting out just as I am. I've been told that to match the color grading between shots or between elements correctly by eye can take years to be able to see the subtle differences between the elements or the, or the plates. So before last year, I used to be reasonably good at compositing images in Photoshop. Back then I used helper layers or false color layers. Anybody that's watched Photoshop tutorials on YouTube might have actually seen these before. I tried to recreate these false color layers in Nuke, but quickly found that Nuke's merge nodes are not exactly the same as, as Photoshop's blend modes. So I had to create some things to give a similar effect, but using a, a number of nodes in Nuke. So I created a gizmo, which will hopefully replicate these helper layers so that you don't have to rely solely on doing it by eye or even worse, tediously using the values that are shown in Nuke's viewer. The problem that you have with that though is picking and selecting the colors in Nuke really only shows you where, where you are at that moment. It will show you whether the two plates match or not, but doesn't really show you which direction you need to go to bring things in line. So I created a gizmo that's hopefully quite intuitive so that you can see which direction you need to go quite easily uh, and, and you get some good feedback whilst you're doing it. So as you start to try and match the grid, you can actually see it on the screen in front of you. So with that said, um, let's just jump straight into the comp. What we've got here in terms of the comp is just a very, very basic, straightforward slap comp with a not a fantastic alpha, but an alpha all the same. Uh, yeah, I'm going to quickly show you the alpha. So not fantastic by any means, but enough to be able to demonstrate the tool for sure. So uh, what, what we'd be looking to do is looking you, here is where we're going to merge the two plates. This can equally be anywhere in the comp where you're going to have two elements come together. What we'll be looking at doing is placing the gizmo. If you want to know on, a little bit more on how to how to install the gizmo or how I created it, how it works, then you can just jump on over to my website. I'll put the link again to that in the description. Um, and there's a full write up on the node, the gizmo, how it works, the theory behind it. Um, you can also download it from there or from my Wikipedia page. Um, yeah, here we go. You can see uh, this is a full description on, on how it works, what each of the options do. Uh, and then there's also a, a, there's links to videos on how you install gizmos uh, using Nuke. Uh, basically what you'd be doing is install it into the .nuke folder, or you can just simply copy paste the node in and then set it as a, as a tool set, whichever you feel comfortable with. Either way, um, I'll just grab it here. Okay. Either way, we grab the gizmo and we put it after the merge and then we view through that gizmo. At the moment, it's set to no helper. We've got three different options. You can, no helper is, is do nothing. So I've set this up so that you don't have to quick, quick you don't have to keep disabling and re-enabling the node all the time. Um, then there are three options to help you match the grade. You match the color, the saturation, and the luminance. Not necessarily in that order, because as you move the color, you're gonna, it's gonna affect the saturation and the luminance. So you'll bounce around a little bit until you get the until you get the grade that you're looking for. So we've we've popped it in at the end of the comp. Then what we'll be doing is uh, grading either the foreground or the background. In this case, I'm going to grade the background to match the foreground. So we'll stick a quick grade node in, and then once we've got the grade node on, we'll be looking at going through each of the sections one at a time. I would recommend personally uh, not doing it all within one grade node. I would separate out your color, your, satur your saturation to a separate node and another grade node to match the luminance. It's probably the best way to do it because it gives you the greatest control. So we'll jump straight into the color. Immediately you can see uh, straight away 
the stark difference between the foreground and the background. The foreground is very red and magenta, whereas the background is very blue and green. So as you can see, all we'd need to do now is uh, we'll first try to grade the, the gamma, the midtones. So we're just moving the sliders until we start to match it. It's a good idea to pick an area where you want to match. I'm not necessarily keen on matching his face 100% because that's going to be uh, where we, he's going to get a lot of reflected color off what, what whatever's on the screen here. So instead, I'm going to try and match the color on his coat. Uh, the girl is another matter because she's different again. Um, for her, we'll, we'll come back to her in a minute, but for her, you could even grade her to match the background as well and bring everything in line a little bit just with masks. So well, we're going to add a little bit more red. And we're going to move the blue slightly. See, already you can see things are starting to come in line. There we go. We're just moving the sliders around until it, until it matches nicely. There we go. And we'll even look at the grade, grading the gain as well. And again, all we're doing here is seeing what looks best. Just trying to match his coat. There we go. And then we can turn this off and on. And already you can see there's a big difference. It looks, um, if I disable and re-enable the grade that I've just done, you can see it's bringing it really in line with the foreground. Then we'll move on to the saturation. Saturation here is represented in brighter colors are more saturated, darker colors are, are less saturated. So you can see the guy, his face is very saturated. His coat is actually quite saturated in this area. And this is the area that we're gonna try and match. So we'll stick a saturation node just after our color helper or our color node. Then we're just gonna pull this down a little bit. You can see, starting to try and match it a bit better. There we go. Around about there should look good. Yeah, already you can see the difference. Now, one, one of the things you can tell already just straight away by looking at it is the background and the foreground, the luminance levels, the brightness levels are wrong. They don't match at all. So they're not massively off, but you can see that they're off. But how much? Well, once we move on to the, the luminance, you can see here, lighter is brighter, darker is darker. Uh, it's not a one for one. So it's not exactly just the same as desaturating the image and having a monochrome image. Here, instead, each of the brightness levels of each pixel is represented uh, by grayscale from zero to one, rather than just having the hue desaturated. This is instead taking the actual brightness levels of the image, which is what we're looking for here because this is what we want to match. So we'll stick another grade node uh, after, this, after the saturation. And here, all we'd be looking to do is adding a little bit more contrast because you can see he's quite contrasty. Then we'd be pushing the gain up quite a bit. Now the levels here match or should be matching a lot better, at least anyway. Still a little bit, needs a little bit more contrast. There we go, a bit more. Okay, so we take this off much better. So if we take all of the work that we've done so far and disable and re-enable, you can see now that the grade matches much better. One of the things I did say before though, is the girl or the lady in the background, she doesn't match either him or the background. So what you can do is just put another grade on the foreground this time. Uh, and try uh, along with a mask 
and draw a quick mask. This is going to be quick and dirty, but obviously take more time. And then we'll link these two up. And then we'll look again through our grade helper. Helps if I bring it up though. And we'll do the same thing, but we'll, uh, we'll do it much quicker here. So um, she is very, very red. Um, he, he's red, but there's, she stands out as, for, for, for him at least you can see his face is, is reflected from here. So for her, I think I'm gonna try and push her to match the background a little bit. So we'll do a look at the gamma and we'll just move her so that she matches. Sorry, I didn't have the mask connected. There we go, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna move her so that she matches the background a little bit better. Okay, so I think the reason I'm struggling here is because most of the differences in color are, are actually in the gain rather than the gamma. So we'll move over to the gain instead and try moving things around there. And see what that gives us a much better result straight away. Too far. There we go. All I'm looking to do is try and match her to the overall area in the background a little bit closer, at least anyway. She still needs to have red on her because she's still a foreground element, but I'm hoping that these changes will make a little bit of difference and blend her in a little bit better. There we go. Probably pushed it a little bit too far. But you get the idea, she does fit into the background a whole lot better. I'm actually just gonna back off on the blue just a little bit. There we go. There we go. Obviously that's just a very quick demonstration and the longer you spend trying to match both plates, the better it's going to look. I've not given as much time as, as what I needed to really to match the blacks and the white levels and things, but just for the sake of demonstration, I think you get the idea. So you can download my grade helper from my Nukipedia page. Uh, again, I'll link that in the description. Uh, it's just here. Or you can go to my website, download it straight from there. Uh, it also has the link to the Nukipedia page on here and on the website is a little bit more information on, on how it works, the theory behind it and how to install it and as well as how it works under the hood. So hopefully that, that's useful to you guys. Yes, so any questions then just pop them in the comments. Feel free to let me know if this was useful and helpful and happy comping. Thank you.